Hi everyone, my name is Justin Saw and I'm a junior. Uh, the instrument that I mainly play is called the bass clarinet. And some of you may have heard of this instrument, some of you may have no idea what I'm talking about, and either way, that's completely fine. Um, to explain this a little to you, this is what the regular clarinet looks like, and this is what the bass clarinet looks like. And basically the bass clarinet is an instrument that looks a lot like the clarinet except for the fact that it's a lot larger. And due to its larger size, this means that the sound that the bass clarinet creates is also an octave lower than that of the regular clarinet. And to give you a little background about the instrument, uh, in my opinion the bass clarinet is one of the most unique instruments of a band simply because not many people play it. And in my personal experience, I think there's a couple of reasons why people may be driven away from playing the bass clarinet. The first of which is that the bass clarinet is a relatively large instrument, which means that it is difficult to carry around and transport, which may be the cause of inconvenience for some people. Secondly, um, because of the fact that the bass clarinet is a large instrument, this means that you need to put a lot of air into the instrument in order for you to create a full sound. And that may be difficult for people to get used to when they first start. Uh, but lastly and most importantly, I think it's important to note that the bass clarinet is largely a supporting instrument. So what this means is that when you play the bass clarinet in a band, it is very unlikely that you receive the melody. Instead, your job is mainly to support the melody of the band, often played by um, more common, common instruments like clarinets, flutes, or trumpets. So if this fits your personality where you want to be a team player and you like supporting certain people in order to contribute to the group, I think uh, the bass clarinet would be a great instrument for you to start. But if your personality is more centered towards being heard or making sure that uh, you're, you're able to receive the spotlight on stage, then personally I'd suggest a different instrument. But if you like the sound of the bass clarinet anyways, then sure, um, why not, right? And personally, to give you a little background about me, um, my first choice for instrument actually wasn't the bass clarinet. It was the trumpet because I thought it looked um, nice and cool because of the fact that it was shiny. But um, in fifth grade band, our teacher spontaneously asked us if any of us would be willing to volunteer to play a bass instrument because our band was lacking one at the time. And without much thought, I signed up to play bass clarinet. Um, and at the time, I didn't really think much of it. But looking back on the decision I made, I think it was a great choice for me because it fit my personality, but also because being able to play an instrument that was unique was beneficial when going to different bands where um, a bass clarinet would always be needed. So that's a little about the bass clarinet. Now I'm going to go over there and show you how to set it up in order for you to have a fun time playing. So this is the case and when you open it up, it should look something like this. Uh, there are bass clarinets where it's one piece, so these two parts aren't separated, but I wouldn't recommend using those because they're actually quite difficult to carry around. Opening up this compartment, you should find a couple of things. Firstly, this is the cloth that you will use to clean your instrument after you're done playing. Uh, this is the mouthpiece, which we'll get into a bit later. And finally, these are just some extra reeds that I have just in case my reed, uh, reed cracks or breaks. So this is the mouthpiece, and as you can see right now, it has a protector on. So I'm going to take that protector off. And once I've done that, you can see that the mouthpiece is basically made up of three parts. Firstly, the mouthpiece body itself, the black part. Secondly, the reed, which is just a piece of wood that is attached to the mouthpiece body. And thirdly, the ligament, the silver piece that connects the mouthpiece and the reed together. Um, if you've seen other tutorials before this, like the one for alto saxophone, it's basically the same information. Now, when I've taken off the ligament, which is this part right here, um, I've separated the mouthpiece with the reed. Now, when you take out your instrument and you try to put the, put the reed onto your mouthpiece, Remember to do two things. Firstly, you want to make sure that you put the reed inside your mouth for 30 seconds to a minute. And this is mainly to make sure that the reed is moisturized in order to help it vibrate when you put it onto the mouthpiece. Because essentially what the job of the reed is, is when you put it together like this and you blow onto it, 
uh, the vibration of the reed is essentially what creates the sound of the instrument. And in order for the vibration to work correctly, you want to make sure that the reed is wet. But second, uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, you probably can't, but my reed right now isn't really that straight. So I need to straighten it out in order to create the best sound possible. And in order to do that, when your reed is like, is not straight and it's curved because it's a very thin piece of wood, as you can see, uh, you want to put your mouthpiece here and you want to put the, put the reed onto the mouthpiece because as you can see, the mouthpiece is flat in this area. Put it onto the flat area and push down with your thumb in order to straighten out the reed before proceeding to put it onto the mouthpiece. After you've done those two steps, you can put the reed onto your mouthpiece, like so. Take the ligament and make sure that the reed and mouthpiece are connected well together. Like that. And then you've created your mouthpiece. So now we're actually going to assemble the instrument together. Uh, we just assembled our mouthpiece, so that's right here. And the first thing you want to do is you want to take the top joint of the instrument, which looks like this. It's called the top joint because it's on the top half. And you want to take the bottom joint of the instrument and you want to connect them together like this. The most important thing to remember when you collect, uh, when you connect these two together is um, if you see the keys that are moving right now, do you see those two that are connected together? You want to make sure when you put your instrument, when you put the top joint and the bottom joint together, that these two are lined up with each other so that when you click on the keys, the buttons actually move. Um, if this didn't really make sense to you right now, I'm sure like when you have the instrument in front of you, it'll look a lot clearer to you. Next, we have the neck of the instrument, which is connected to the top joint. So you want to put that in right there. And then we have the bell of the instrument, which is where the sound of the bass clarinet comes from. We're going to attach this to the bottom joint. One tip when you put your instrument together is that if the joints aren't going in, instead of like trying to just push it through, uh, have a combination of pushing and like sliding your instrument like this. It might help uh, the joints go in a little bit smoother. And then we have the floor peg and basically what this is, is it connects to this part of the instrument where uh, you put the floor peg in like this. And we have the floor peg because it helps control the height of the bass clarinet uh, to best accommodate um, us because everyone is at different heights so you want to be able to control uh, what angle the mouthpiece is coming to uh, coming at your mouth. Finally, we have the mouthpiece. So we want to connect this to the neck of the instrument like this. And once we've done that, this is the bass clarinet fully assembled. It should look something like this once you're done. So yeah, uh, that was a quick intro to the bass clarinet and how to assemble its parts together. Um, I know the bass clarinet is a pretty large instrument with lots of different parts, so it's only natural if you're a little confused. Just let me know if you have any questions. Um, I hope this is at least a little helpful for you to get a feel of the instrument. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.